Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Red with Ramen Noodle Budgets, and today we're taking this Trick or Treat Studios Tramer mask and turning it into a mask out of 1978's Halloween. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly point out that the insane majority of my viewers are unsubscribed, so if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to be notified of newly released videos. So let me just start by saying this is one of those masks I thought was going to be really easy and a one day project, but because of unexpected issues, this mask took me a whole week. So let's get right on into it. If you don't recognize this mask, it's from Halloween 2. It's from the guy they think is Michael Myers, but it's not, and they basically kill him on accident. Anyways, going on to the hair, you can go ahead and rehair it, or this hair is actual mohair, so it can be dyed. So that was my original plan. Um, I bought a darker uh, ash blonde hair dye, just a regular Revlon. Um, if, or this is actually L'Oreal, I'm sorry. If you've never used a hair dye, it's super simple. Uh, you go ahead, you just put the developer in with the actual color. Um, just like I do my normal hair, I put it everywhere on my head or inside the hair, and then using some gloves, um, go ahead and run that through. The unfortunate part of this is this mask had really, this was probably the worst hair job I've ever seen on a Trick or Treat Studios mask. Um, and I, this is this was purchased directly from Amazon, so I don't really know who to blame here at this point, but it was missing huge chunks, whole bunch of bald spots. As you can see here, um, the layering was just really strange. There's huge gaps. Um, but if you're going to go ahead with the dyeing technique, just go ahead and try and get it into that glue hairline as much as you can. To be honest with you, it's not going to take much, so you will need to do some secret painting to go ahead and hide some of that. Now this paint, um, this hair dye was weird where it was working as a toner, where it was turning it purple, which means it's trying to tone it. So it actually turned the hair into a strange dark gray like an old person gray but here you can see where i'm talking about that there's so many bald spots in the hair um it just i ended up rehairing it just spoiler alert in here um and i'll kind of explain why later on but if you're gonna go this way you definitely can i know people have done it with the spend trimmer mask um go ahead and remove the sideburns because if you haven't noticed those don't belong there unless you're doing a halloween four mask um Go ahead and remove those. My original plan was to remove the front of the hairline and then I was gonna trim it um, to go ahead and just remove that awful hairline where it wasn't being dyed. And then I was just gonna glue it back on like I have in the past, especially with like the Captain Kirk rehaul. Um, and there you can see Michael's weird uh, crackhead look. <laughs> so yeah, I kept all those uh, pieces of hair on the uh, you know, intention to originally attach those, but I ended up throwing it all away. Using some naphtha, I went ahead and wiped the mask down because there's quite a lot of glue left over. Um, a lot of people ask me in the comments if this is a required step. Um, I highly recommend it. It really helps for paint adhesion, especially if you have glue. Um, it just also helps keep the mask uh, looking a lot more smooth because if there's anything on the surface stuck, it's, it's gonna show with the paint. Uh, paint can do a lot, but you know, it's not a miracle worker. Here I taped the mask off with just a paper bag and tied it in the back. We're starting with a flesh tone like every other Michael Myers mask I've ever done. Um, it's, I did kind of a darker flesh tone, a little bit more orangey, like Oompa Loompa orange almost. Um, I added that Tim Gore uh, latex promoting adhesion doohickey stuff. <laughs> it's the best stuff I've used, although I do run into some problems that I'll kind of talk about later on. So here's me after air, uh, airbrushing the entire mask. Um, you can do this by hand. This mask doesn't have that much detail that I have to worry about um, removing, so you can definitely hand brush this, but this is where the airbrush really comes in helpful, um, or just, you know, gives you that little bit of extra oomph. This uh, technique is painting just straight down almost with the airbrush. And the reason I'm doing this, uh, as I talked about in my last video, was to get the paint to not build up as much in areas where the original mask didn't. For example, right on the, um, the inner corners of the eye, like close to the nose, that area doesn't really have paint. You can see it in the movie. Um, it's either from them removing the mask so much or likely from them painting the same way I did straight down to avoid the hair. Um, you can use a uh, hair dryer here. I'm using on a low setting to go ahead and just help speed that paint up because I'm doing really light layers on this mask. Um, but as I was saying, the other areas you want to avoid are the nose as well as the neck 
um, so underneath the I guess the jaw and into the neck area it depends on which what you're going you're look you're going for but that seems to be the most common Michael Myers mask I've seen by rehaulers and just you know in general with the great replicas that are out there these days um, I also recommend trying to leave a little bit of the flesh tone on the lips and around the mouth area um, it makes it a lot easier later on when you're doing some of the weathering because the lips are a lot more accentuated than you think so here's the mask after that. You can see the nose. Some of that inner eye on this round um, is there. And this is where I'm going in with naphtha. Um, I know got, uh, I've had some comments as well asking if you have to use naphtha for this. And I'll be honest, in the past I have used things like acetone or nail polish remover um, on a Q-tip to remove the paint. So you can definitely do that. I wouldn't recommend it as much though because it could remove a lot more paint. Naphtha is nice because as you can see, it's a slow process of removing the paint. My technique is usually to get a Q-tip pretty uh, immersed in the naphtha, wipe down the area, and then get a dry Q-tip and just slowly go back and forth to begin removing the paint. Because if you do it a lot and just keep going in the same areas, you're gonna dig into the paint all the way underneath on the original mask and that's really not what you're looking for. So, um, just go ahead and do that over the eyebrows, lips. I also do it over the ears, just on the edges to get some of the um, the paint off. You really just gotta think about it as where would the mask naturally get weathered? It's gonna be wherever the areas were, uh, you know, with the most abrasion. Here, I went ahead and I used my airbrush with that same exact tone I used before um, on the skin tone to go ahead and just add a little bit more because I wanted it to be a little bit more accentuated. Um, Definitely not required um, as you can see I kind of went a little bit overboard with it But what I always recommend is when you're painting multiple layers like this if you can put them in a cup with a lid I buy these just plastic um, disposable cups and put a lid on them um, Because you never know when you need to go back and this was a technique I decided to try of using the paint like I was just saying the original skin tone I put it on a brush and was almost dry brushing. So instead of removing paint I started to add some to make it look like paint had been removed um, you know, because paint is so light, especially when you use airbrush paint, it is something you are able to do um, without it looking raised or anything like that. So I did do it over the eyebrows and I went ahead and applied that to any of those high spots like I mentioned before. Now here is the mask after I went ahead and did a lot of that weathering. Um, this was, like I said, this was still the first run of the mask. Now, what I wanted to show in this clip specifically is on the nose, as you can see, there's kind of like a little latex spot. This was on the original paint job of the mask. Like I said, this mask came from Amazon. It had a lot of issues. Um, and I'll kind of explain why that specific spot was such an issue. I started by mixing up my black wash, which I do with all of these um, original Michael Myers masks because the mask is very, very dirty. Like I explained in the last video um, from the hairspray that was used, uh, the spray, the black spray paint or black hair dye spray. Um, it got all over the mask because they were taking it on and off, which led the mask to look dirty, get little black smudges everywhere. So I started by brushing on a super, super watery, um, I used just some, you know, cheap craft barrel, whatever it's called, uh, paint, paint, you can get it at Walmart in the craft section, it's like a dollar. Um, I mixed that up with a ton of water and I began to lightly wipe it off and blot it with the paper towel. But what happened was, um, for whatever reason, the adhesion was just not happening on this mask. I don't know if it was the... I don't know what exactly what happened. But basically what happened was that little booger on the nose as I was cleaning the mask off completely tore off a whole section of the original latex mask. And you can't really work with that. So I had to go ahead and peel all of the paint off and use a felt tip Dremel. And a lot of people do this, they say you're supposed to. I do not recommend it, I don't think it's required, but it's what happened. I also decided to add in some latex, um, liquid latex, and I brushed in the um, the uh, sideburn lines because I thought it would add a little bit extra definition. This was one of the best things I found actually after doing this, and I wish I would have done it with my original Captain Kirk rehaul, because it makes a world of a difference, especially just kind of giving you a guide later on to paint with. Um, I did exactly what I did before. I just repainted the mask. Um, I went a lot lighter on the white paint um, to kind of build it up in those areas. And uh, I basically removed the paint with the naphtha. And then here I have a little bit of black paint completely, almost all wiped off of this brush. And then I'm dry brushing it into the high spots of the lips. I did this over the nose, the eyebrows. Um, I added it a little bit around the eyes too, just to kind of define them a little bit more. Um, I don't think it's really on the original mask, but I see it quite often. 
and I also did it around the ears and the sideburn lines that I added. So this was kind of that final look. Uh, I got really happy with it. I was just so worried about the paint coming off again. Um, I didn't really want any of that weathering that I did with the uh, the black wash to go away. So what I ended up doing was, this was the first time I sealed a mask. I did a, quite a bit of research on this on what was best. Um, I did find that this paint, um, which is available at Michael's, it's just a satin medium, which means you're supposed to mix it with like acrylics, um, but it's a flexible paint. I mixed it with a little bit of a airbrush paint thinner um, until I got an airbrush consistency and I just sprayed it on. Um, it didn't adjust, I thought, because I was worried that it was going to make it too glossy um, or too matte, so I got a satin. It didn't change the actual um, finish of the mask at all and it did seal in all that paint. Um, so, And it's waterproof too, which is really nice. Um, so I went ahead and did that all over the mask. I gave it about two coats. Highly recommend this. Um, I'd never done this before, but I really do think it's helpful. Now, rehairing the mask, uh, there were no lines to work with like the other mask I did, so I drew them on based off of a few other tutorials I found on YouTube. Um, for this tutorial, I started using crepe hair. Uh, I was always afraid to hair a mask, but crepe hair makes this so easy. Uh, honestly, if you're really worried about doing it, trust me, it's one of those things where you trust the process and at the end of the day, the mask is gonna look great regardless if you mess up at all. It's just kind of one of those weird things. But you straighten it out with a hair straightener and then I cut it into five inch strands. Now each of those blocks, that is one cut of the, mo or of the crepe hair. You just kind of pull it apart until it's one layer. Um, and then I use tacky glue, absolute best glue for hair. Don't listen to what anyone else says about using uh, contact cement or rubber cement or um, E6000. This is the glue. It's so easy to work with, it dries fast, and that hair does not come off. So what I would do is basically take the strands, try to get them in one basic layer. As I, as I said before, that is one cut of the crepe hair. Once it's straightened out and pulled apart, it's, it's massive. It, it doesn't look like what it is, but um, I did use exactly three whole rolls of crepe hair. It's about $8 at most stores or on Amazon. Um, so it is a little bit pricier because you're paying about $24, uh, 25 bucks with shipping and everything to make these. Um, but it's worth it. it. It really does make a world of a difference. I would then go ahead and paint some of the, um, or not paint, but uh, glue over with more tacky glue. So I just kind of drip it over with the bottle and then using one of these tools, I'd go ahead and just push all those top layers of the hair down to make sure they're all in there. Like I said, this looks really ugly at first, and the first time I did it, I was like, "This, there's no way this is going to turn out, but it, it does, because once you brush it out, um, a lot of the hair is going to come with it, and it's going to start smoothing all together, um, and just making the world of a difference. The crepe wool hair is so much easier to style than the mohair, in my opinion, and it actually starts to style itself. Um, I really didn't have to do too much hairstyling at all, which is why I didn't really show any styling in this video. Uh, but I basically went ahead, I did this all the way up. I realized I bought two different color mohairs. I bought a, this light brown and then the top, I actually used a dark brown. You can see right on the right there, the two different differences in colors. To mash that up, I did use a little bit of an airbrush and then I brushed everything through, which I unfortunately do not have any footage of, but it's just airbrushing. And then quickly styled it with a little bit of a, um, strong cold hairspray and that is the final look through the mask on uh, my mannequin I just bought with some spruce green coveralls and I thought it looked absolutely amazing I was so happy with the final product like I said this was a difficult mask just because of the adhesion issues and it was the first time ever stripping a mask completely but I really hope you guys enjoyed this one I know a lot of people are excited for the Rob Zombie video which is coming out next Monday so I hope you guys stay tuned and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend